so let us start the second class of the pharmacology sources classification and composition of drug so the mainly the sources and classification of the drug we are going to concern regarding the sources of drug is concerned earlier the drug are mainly of the plant origin and in and in traditional system of the drug particularly concerned to the country like india we are mainly using the drug of plant origin which is earlier in time that is from the ayurveda source that may be from unani that may be the siddha they are of plant source and you call the natural so they are natural substances but currently or you can say at present time the drug that we are using are synthetic in nature so this is very very important uh, uh, the drug that we are using nowadays are synthetic in nature regarding the discovery of uh, the drug that are very very important and natural in origin and you also say the life saving in nature like antineoplastic drug so antineoplastic drug are those drug that are using for the therapy of cancer that is called the antineoplastic drug so these all are plant constituent and used for the therapy of cancer or tumor you can say the constituent that has been isolated from the plant are etopicide taxol vinblastin and respectively their plants are for etopicide podophyllum peltatum for taxol texas baccata or brevifolia then wind blasting from catharanthus rosea so these all are life saving and plant origin now a day that we already discuss currently we are using the drug that are synthetic in nature the constituent present in plant that are used particularly for the treatment purposes we are going to call it the active constituent so active constituent are the constituent present in the plant possesses the therapeutic values and these active constituent from the plant should be isolated from either bark fruit flower leaf seed and root or you can say almost all part of the plant we have to isolate the active constituent and that active constituent may be single or it may contain more than one component and that are responsible for therapeutic values now we have to classify the sources of drug so sources of drug are classify mainly two type that are the natural sources and just opposite to this natural sources is synthetic sources so mainly the drug should be classified in two type the natural sources and just opposite to this natural sources is synthetic synthetic sources in between these two others are coming like if 
the sources is lies between synthetic and natural we are going to call it semi synthetic sources and the last one is the biosynthetic sources so there are four classes classes of sources of drug amongst these four are mainly two that are very very important the natural sources and just opposite to this is synthetic sources and if this synthetic is half of one semi means half synthetic then we are going to call it semi synthetic and if you are going to manipulate by taking the help of engineering or bioengineering or biotechnology then uh, that is called biosynthetic sources so classified as natural semi synthetic synthetic and biosynthetic so these two are four type amongst that two are very very important the natural sources and synthetic sources regarding natural sources of drug is concern the natural sources is divided based upon the chemical nature and these two are the organic and just opposite to organic is inorganic so natural sources of the drugs are either organic or inorganic under the organic natural sources it may be again uh, three type under the natural organic sources these if this is isolated from plant is called plant organic sources if this is isolated from animal animal organic sources if the drug should be isolated from microorganism we are going to call it microorganism natural natural organic sources so this is all the three are organic sources now we have to go through the natural inorganic sources so natural inorganic sources for the drugs are metal non metal or you can say mineral in origin so this is all about the natural sources which is divided into two type organic natural sources and inorganic natural sources and now we have to go through the semi synthetic sources before going to start semi synthetic uh, semi synthetic uh, sources that uh, we also have to know about the synthetic sources then we have also have to know about the biosynthetic sources so let us start the semi synthetic sources so semi synthetic sources means ki this is a hybrid hybrid of synthetic and natural so you can say semi synthetic sources of drug is neither completely natural and nor completely synthetic so how this is going to be synthesized so that is why their name is hybrid hybrid of natural and synthetic is called semi synthetic sources of the drug and that is why this is called hybrid sources of the drug so regarding the semi synthetic sources of drug is concerned in which what the process is going on they are usually having a chemical structure that is isolated from natural sources a chemical structure or you can say the starting material or the uh, the main ingredient is isolated from the natural sources or you can say the functional group or a starting material should be isolated from natural source and in which the chemical reaction is going on as a resultant we are getting the semi synthetic product means ki from the natural sources we are receiving the functional group and that from functional group we were we were adding the side chain so with natural sources possessing the giving the functional group and in functional group we were we were putting the side chain and because of adding of the side chain as a resultant of chemical reaction we obtained the drug we call it the semi synthetic sources 
द बेस्ट एग्जाम्पल इज सेमी सिंथेटिक पेनिसिलीन ओके सो वॉट इज दिस एग्जाम्पल अंडर सेमी सिंथेटिक मेडिसिन आर एंटीबायोटिक्स लाइक पेनिसिलीन सेमी सिंथेटिक पेनिसिलीन एंड अदर कीमोथेरापिटिक ड्रग्स लाइक पेक्लिटेक्सल एंड अदर्स ऑल्सो सो पेक्लिटेक्सल इज एक्चुअली एंटी कैंसरस ड्रग और यू कैन से एंटी न्यू प्लास्टिक ड्रग सो फ्रॉम अ फंगस we are isolating the functional group of penicillin the name of the function fungus was penicillium cherisogenum from this penicillium cherisogenum we are get, we are getting the functional group six amino penicillinic acid so this one is the six amino penicillinic acid is a functional group with this functional group we we are putting the side chain through the chemical reaction to get the semi synthetic penicillin like ampicillin like amoxicillin we are getting like this so this as a whole from this structure to this up to this is called six amino penicillinic acid and in this six amino penicillinic acid we are we are putting here the side chain through the chemical reaction this r is a side chain so this r is we are putting in the uh, as a side chain and as a resultant through the chemical reaction we are obtaining the semi synthetic drug like uh, from the penicillin group like ampicillin amoxicillin so this is all about the semi synthetic sources of drug now we have to go through the synthetic sources of drug regarding synthetic sources of drug the name is clear cut telling the this should be synthesized in lab so this is interesting these drug are synthesized in lab and present day we are mainly using the drug are mostly or primarily are synthetic in nature and even though the drug that are obtained from the plant from that drug is also should be synthesized nowadays in the lab why because synthetic drugs are more pure more effective less toxic because in natural sources of drug what will happen they are not totally pure if they are not totally pure the other component present there they may have some toxic effect or they may have less effective so that is why even the drug that are isolated from plant or natural sources that are nowadays synthesizing in the lab to get in pure form so pure form is going to give more effective and because of the uh, the, uh, the they are deficient in uh, uh, the the uh, the, uh, the other component the or impure impurities they are less toxic in nature so these drug paracetamol earlier they are isolated from the natural cell nowadays we are getting this paracetamol and we are synthesizing in the lab similarly the other drug that are also synthesizing in the lab are aspirin so this paracetamol is a drug for fever anti inflammatory and anti and antipyretic means fever for inflammation so anti inflammatory antipyretic this aspirin aspirin is also analgesic anti inflammatory analgesic then digepam digepam is a sedative and then ofloxacin is an antibiotic this is a, this is also antibacterial this is a lidocaine is a local anesthetic so these all drug more than this or you can say the many drug nowadays are synthesizing in lab even though they are natural natural naturally obtained from naturally obtained why because of these regions that we already mentioned now we have to go through the biopharmaceutics or biosynthetic so here you have to go through the term 
what this biopharmaceutics is divided into two part bio and pharmaceutics or bio uh, synthetic so what it means we are synthesizing the drug in biosynthetically or we are using the uh, the help of the biotechnology we are taking the help of genetic so we are going to make in some way we are taking the help of the technology and we are using the bio source or life source and with the help of the engine genetic engineering we are getting the drug are called biosynthetic or the source that should be prepared in the lab by taking the help of life and we are manipulating so this is bioengineering or biotechnology and we are also taking up the help of genetics so recombinant dna technology we are taking up the help so this is called biopharmaceuticals or biosynthetic source of the drug and nowadays this is also obtained as a major source of new drug this biotech is the major source of the new drug and by this means we are getting the antibodies we are getting the hormones we are getting the enzyme various enzyme we are getting the various proteins we are getting the uh, uh, cytokines so now we are going to go through the uh, example uh, in which we are going to discuss by taking the help of life or bio and taking the help of genetic engineering we are synthesizing the drug that is called biopharmaceuticals or biosynthetic source of the drug and we are going through the examples are that examples are take the example of human peptide like antidiuretic hormone we are synthesizing uh, biopharmaceutically then oxytocin hormone then the then, then the gn gonadotropin releasing hormone then the another hormone acth and also in the laboratory by taking the help of the live bioengineering or genetic we are synthesizing the insulin in the lab by signaling the dna of dna in e coli so so e coli is going to synthesize the insulin so this uh, insulin should be obtained biosynthetically other examples are erythropoietin so this recombinant human erythropoietin also obtained by biopharmaceuticals method also recombinant somatotropin so these are the examples under the bio uh, bio biosynthetic biopharmaceuticals or biosynthetic source and uh, now we have to go through the first the most important the natural source that we are not discuss we already discussed this one synthetic one we already discussed the biosynthetic one now uh, we are also going uh, we already discussed the semi synthetic source now we are going to discuss the semi synthetic uh, semi synthetic source of the uh, drug uh, no sorry natural source of the drug now we are going to discuss this natural source of the drug so now we have to start the natural source of the drug so earlier we have divided this natural source of drug into organic source and inorganic source under the organic source they have divided it into three types the plant origin animal origin and microorganism origin so now we have to start with the plant source of the drug under the natural source so this is also called vegetable source of the drug under the vegetable source of the drug they, they are usually isolated from as a crude extract and that is not in pure pure form usually when you are extracting the, the cure, uh, cure uh, crude extract they are not pure because uh, they are containing more than one active constituent if you isolate it then it will obtain or give rise the uh, pure uh, constituent 
and these should be isolated from various or different part of the plant that we already discussed this may be the root this may be the seed this may be the flower this may be the bark this may be the stem this may be the tuber this may be the rhizome so you can say almost all part of the plant are going to give rise the active constituent and that are possessing some therapeutic values so now we are going through the active principle that are isolated from the plant and possessing some therapeutic values are take the example the plant isolated plant like rauwolfia serpentina this is isolated from mainly from the root of this rauwolfia serpentina another one is the ipica quana that the botanical name of this plant or scientific name is cephalis ipica quana so if you go through the all the scientific name of the plant usually the name of the active principle are the same almost the name of the active principle are giving you the clue that is isolated from that particular plant that is going to give you this rau wolfia so rau wolfia uh, is going to serpentina is going to give active principle reserpine and this reserpine should be used for the therapy of blood pressure and that is called anti hypertensive drug so reserpine is was isolated from rauwolfia serpentina and used for the therapy of blood pressure and that is called anti hypertensive drug now second one is the from the same root origin is the ipicoquana and the name of the active constituent is ipicoc actually this is ipicoc is possessing the active principle imitin imitin is an alkaloid and the name is going to give you the clue what is the therapeutic value of this so imatin is used for the for producing imatic what is imatics imatics are the agent when you are going to take it this is going to produce the vomition so this drug imatin or ipicoc when you are going to take it this is going to produce the vomition next is the drug or you can say the active principle isolated from the bulb of the plant is arginia maritima or arginia the active principle are siliroside uh, and silarin a or if you are recalling the name of plant squill that the constituent is also called squill so these arginia or you can say the active constituent is kill or silurocide or silarin a is a rodenticide so what is rodenticide rodent means red side means to kill so this plant is used to kill the red and you are using uh, as a rodenticide not only that that is also going to produce the vomition so emetics as well as rodenticide the action of this plant or use or action of the plant is rodenticide third again from the uh, again uh, uh, the next is uh, uh, the bark of the plant like cinchona the scientific name is here and the another from uh, the other plant is texas brevifolia and other plant is pausina nistelia yohimbi these all plant are uh, particularly the bark of these plant are possessing the active principle and that active principle are from cinchona everyone everyone is knowing from the cinchona we are getting the active constituent quin quinin and this quinin is very much usable from very old days as a anti malarial drug the drug used for therapy of malaria that is also isolated from the bark of cinchona tree next one is in texas 
the name of this uh, active constituent is, uh, is came, coming from this Texas. So the constituent is Texol and uh, another one Texol, this plant is a neoplastic drug or anti-cancerous drug or you can say the drug used for the therapy of the tumor. Next under this bark is Yohembi. So this from Yohembi, the name of the active constituent is Yohembin. So this is coming from this genus uh, species, Yohembi. So Yohembin is a alpha 2 adrenergic receptor blocker. So what this alpha 2 adrenergic receptor blocker? So if you uh, in the pre uh, in the coming classes you go through the various receptor uh, adrenergic. So this uh, uh, receptor is called adrenergic receptor. So there are various type of adrenergic receptor alpha and beta. Under the alpha uh, receptor is alpha 1, alpha 2. So this uh, yohimbin is a blocking the action of drug or natural component acting through the alpha 2 receptor so that is why this is called alpha 2 adrenergic receptor blocker yohembin is a alpha 2 adrenergic receptor blocker and because of the blocking this uh, alpha 2 receptor the, this drug is used for the therapy of to treat the poisoning cases due to this amitraj this is uh, an insecticide and also this drug yohembin active constituent is a uh, use as aphrodisias aphrodisias is actually used for the uh, to increase the sex libido the drug use enhances the libido so this next is the rhizome so what this is also the part of the plant from which uh, the th two plant we are going to discuss the ginger and podophyllum. So ginger from this ginger we are isolating the active constituent the name is also based upon the ginger. Gingerol put all so gingerol and from podophyllum uh, the, 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 the active constituent is uh, phyllotoxin. So this uh, is uh, these two gingerol is very good carminative agent. So what is the meaning of this carminatives? Carminatives we are putting here S. So carminatives. So carminatives are the agent. Carminative are the agent which helps in the digestion, which enhances the digestion and helps to empty the, uh, the, the, the content present in the GI tract are called carminative and therefore it will help in the digestion and also the podophyllum that is the component is phyllotaxin they are also enhancing the, uh, the, 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 the digestion and also used to expel out the bowel present in the GI tract I mean both are the same type of term carminative, purgative are same type of interchangeable term these term are interchanges so these are used as a in a to enhance the digestion so now we have to go through the wood wood of the plant like sandalwood and quassia then the, from sandalwood we are isolating the oil we call it the uh, sandalwood oil and quassia we are you obtaining the ex, uh, active constituent name is the same quassin so this uh, sandalwood oil is antiseptic so what is antiseptic anti means oppose septic means sepsis so when you are putting this sandalwood oil over the skin this will check from sepsis to kill the microorganism present over the uh, skin like that the, nowadays we are using various uh, antiseptic particularly the antiseptic that contain more than 70 percent alcohol to kill that coronavirus so this is also the antibacterial sandalwood oil but whether this is going to kill that virus or not i don't know next is the quesin quesin is isolated from the quesia plant and this is stomachic 
so stomachic are the agent when you are going to put any agent or drug you have to put s so stomachic so stomachic are the agent or the drug this is a terminology that we are discussing like carminatives putting like s with the purgatives so carminative and purgative are the agent or the drug or the chemical that are going to enhance the digestion and helps to expel out the gi tract content likewise the stomachic are the agent or the drug or the chemicals that are used to enhance the digestion in uh, enhance the peristaltic movement enhance the digestion evacuate the gases are called stomachic next plant from the same wood is uh, cinnamomum camphora so from this camphora is what is active constituent is coming cam camphor so camphor everyone is knowing is kapur camphor so this is a ruby facient so what is ruby facient again i am telling if you are going to discuss any agent or drug you put s so ruby facients are the agent when you are the drug or the chemical when you are applying over the skin this is going to enhance the uh, blood circulation at that area where you have applied these agent so ruby means redness and therefore because of enhancement of the blood circulation at the site of application of the uh, agent this is going to enhance the circulation and therefore it gives the red in color and it uh, helps to heal wound fastly next is the this uh, this uh, the leaf from the leaf leaf what are the things that we, uh, the, uh, we are isolating these are very very important uh, plant from which we are from which we are isolating the active constituent the plant like atropa belladonna the plant this is also called uh, uh, as the belladonna this is also called dhatura the another power plant is digitalis scientific name is digitalis purpurea and the ne next is the pilocarpus zeburendi these all are the plant and their leaf part having the active constituent so name of this constituent active constituent isolated from atropa belladonna is coming from this genus atropine this atropine is a anti sialagogue anti sialagogues are the drug that are reducing the salivary secretion and how this these atropine are reducing the salivary secretion this atropine is acting on the muscarinic receptor muscarinic receptor is the receptor on which this atropine is going to block and that is why this is called anti muscarinic drug so atropine is a anti muscarinic drug or muscarinic receptor blocker drug this is blocking the action of neurotransmitter of the body to act on the muscarinic receptor so that is why this is called anti muscarinic or muscarinic blocker which one atropine and this is anti salagog and use as a pre anesthetic now we have to go through the this another one is digitalis the the name of the active constituent is the also based upon the genus digitoxin and digoxin so these two component that are called nic sodium potassium atpase inhibitor this uh, this is called sodium potassium uh, sodium ion potassium ion atp so what is this this is an enzyme so this uh, cardiac uh, this digitoxin and digoxin are called cardiac stimulant and this uh, digitoxin and digi digi digoxin is going to rather block the action of 
this enzyme or inhibit the action of this enzyme sodium ion potassium ion atp and this is called cardiac stimulant so this is a cardiac stimulant and uh, this is used uh, in cardiac arrhythmia now we have to go through the another component pilocarpine this another drug this uh, component active uh, uh, name is coming from this uh, genus pilocarpine pilocarpus jeborandi the name of the constituent is pilocarpine and this is a cholinomimetic alkaloid so what is this cholinomimetic the drug the agent the chemical that having the action similar to acetylcholine and acting on the the acetylcholine receptor are called cholinomimetic which mimic the action of action similar to acetylcholine neurotransmitter is called cholinomimetic and this is anti glaucoma dr uh, drug so what is anti means opposite glaucoma means intraocular pressure intraocular hypertension so, so this pilocarpine is going to reduce the pressure of the eye so this is called anti glaucoma drug now we have to go through the another uh, part of the this uh, the leaf as you can say both the leaf and root so from this part the one plant is chondrodendron tomentosum from this tomentosum we are isolating the very good active constituent we are calling it d-tubocurerin so what this d-tubocurerin is d-tubocurerin is used as a muscle muscle skeletal muscle relaxant it relaxes the skeletal muscle so where we are going to use this one d tubocorin when this is going to relax the uh, muscle this will help in uh, operating the patient particularly the muscle operation because muscle get loosen and therefore you will easily going to apply the seizure so d tubocurerin or tubocurerin is a muscle relaxant particularly the skeletal muscle relaxant how they are going to producing this action by blocking the uh, uh, blocking the uh, 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 action of neurotransmitter on nicotinic receptor so this one tubocurerin is a nicotinic receptor blocker now we have to go through the other drug that uh, isolated from the flower part of the plant are clove pyrethrum so clove is a long so from long we are getting the active constituent eugenol and as you know nowadays the from the this is the customary to use this clove or long to keep beneath the teeth where you feel the pain so this clove the long getting the active constituent eugenol and because of this uh, the ruby patient action because of its local anesthetic uh, action this is going to relieve the pain so what is lo local anesthetic local anesthetics means ki the anesthetic acting locally is called local anesthetic so what is anesthetics anesthetics are the here you again you have to put the edge s so anesthetics are the agent drugs chemical when any patient is going to take it uh, locally they are going to produce loss of sensation at the site of application so when there is loss of sensation no pain so this is used as a uh, to relieve the pain because of its local activity because it is uh, inhibiting the uh, nerve activity by blocking its uh, activity and also a ruby patient ruby patient we already discussed this is going to enhance the uh, the, the circulation to heal the wound now in second component from the same flower part is pyrethrum 
Pyrethrum is an uh, in, insecticide, actually muscle, uh, muscle, uh, mosquito repellent, muscular, uh, mus, mus, uh, mus, mosquito repellent, they have the uh, pyrethrin, also like constituent like cypermethrin, so pyrethrin is a, that is why they are insecticide, they are fly repellent. So fly are insect, so that is why they are insecticide and how this is going to produce this action through delaying the action of VGSSSC, voltage gated sodium channel. So this is going to delaying the activity of voltage gated sodium channel, which one? Pyrethrine. This is isolated from the pl plant pyrethrium so now we have to go through the other constituent of the plant that is the fruit from the fruit we are isolating uh, the component like sinner seni green any so name of the plant is sina then anise so these two are having the similar type of activity because we already discussed when you are going to put here S, uh, here S, then it become purgatives and carminative. And as I earlier told, the terminology like uh, purgative, can, carminative, cathartic, these all are interchangeable term and these terms are defining in such a way that the agent, the drug, the chemical that are used to, in, used to uh, in, increase the peristaltic movement, increase the bowel evacuation and help in, help in digestion and therefore this is going to be used for the therapy of constipation. So the active constituent like this seni green. Now we have to go through the, the, the active constituent isolated from the uh, seed of the plant. The name of the plant of this is the Strychnus nux vomica. Strychnus nux vomica is the name of plant and the constituent obtaining we are named on the basis of their genus. Name of the constituent is the uh, strychnine. So, strychnine is a glycine inhibitor. Strychnine constituent is a glycine inhibitor. So, what is this glycine? The body neurotransmitter like glycine, like GABA, GABA is gamma amino butyric acid. These two are the inhibitory neurotransmitter of the body of the, uh, the, the living being. So what these two neurotransmitters like glycine and GABA is doing, they are inhibiting the excitatory activity of the body. So this strychnine is going to inhibit the inhibitory activity of the glycine. So this is a glycine inhibitor. So inhibitory activity get uh, uh, inhibited and therefore est 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 uh, therefore, it gives rise to the excitatory, excitatory action in the animal when toxicity occurs or in the human being. So, strychnine is used as a rodenticide, killing of rat is called rodenticide and ruminotoric, rum, ruminotoric is the ruminotorex are the agent or are the drug that are going to enhance the peristaltic movement of R-U-M-E-N, rumen. It's called ruminatory drug. Now the another component is from the seed also, particularly the seed port is Pepeber somniferum. This is the poppy plant. So this is very very important plant that we are using for the uh, for for the addiction activity. So the name of the active constituent isolated from this plant paper paper somniferum are codeine morphine. So this codeine and morphine earlier we are using in the cough syrup uh, also used for the therapy of pain. Because because uh, this, so this codeine and morphine is uh, uh, possessing the analgesic activity. Analgesics, when you are putting S, 
this called analgesics so analgesics are the drug the agent the chemical which is going to relieve from the pain is called uh, analgesic and also you use earlier as a cough syrup so what is this cough syrup so that means ki anti means opposite tc means ki cough so this codeine and morphine is also going to reduce the cough stimulation now we have to go through the component isolated from the nut or seed name of the plant are arika katechu so what is this supari that is kaseli also so from this arika katechu we are isolating the component the name is based upon the genus <coughs> ericoline so this ericoline is a a parasympathomimetic uh, activity so what is this parasympathomimetics when you are putting here s so s is indicating chemical agent or drug which enhances the activity of parasympathetic nervous system means ki their activity later on you will go through the uh, the classes of receptor or parasympathetic and sympathetic number and uh, nervous system at that time you will easily understand here i am not going to discuss much more this will take much more time now we have to go through the enthalamic uh, ericoline uh, use as enthalamic so therapeutic value of ericoline isolated from supari arika ketechu their action is enthalamic is the so enthalamics when you are putting is s so this is called enthalamics so this enthalamics word is derived from anti means opposite against helminthis helminth or helmis means worm so the drug or agent or chemical which either expel out the worms or kill the worms is called enthalamics so this is all used as a enthalamic agent another con component uh, plant is physostigma or physostigma venusosum veni venisnosum and from this we are isolating uh, constituent the name is also based upon the genus and the name is physostigmine so physostigmine is a acetylcholine esterase enzyme inhibitor so what is this acetylcholine esterase enzyme acetylcholine esterase enzyme is the enzyme this is called acetylcholine esterase is the enzyme which is destroying the activity of neurotransmitter acetylcholine so what is the function of this physostigmine physostigmine is going to inhibit the activity of this enzyme and therefore this is going to use to reduce the ocular pressure or ocular hypertension and that is why this is called anti glaucoma glaucoma is the rise of blood pressure inside not blood pressure a pressure inside the eye is called glaucoma now we have to go through more plant and more ingredient and their activity this the, the part from the corn we are of uh, plant is called sicum colchicum and the name of the plant is colchicum autumnale and the name of the constituent is colchicin the name is isolating or getting from the uh, this uh, genus colchicum and this is used for the therapy of uh, uh, gout so what is anti gout so when you are putting the as it become term means ki anti gout sarja agent the drug the chemical that are going to remove the gout gout means ki the 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 joint pain so when there is more uric acid get deposited in the gout uh, joint region joint region uh, then this is going to produce the pain, pain of the joint is called gout so this is going to relieve from the pain of the joint 
so next plant from the whole plant we are uh, 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 pro of the plant ephedra vulgare we are also isolating the constituent the name is from the coming from the uh, genus ephedra and the name of the constituent is ephedrine or pseudo ephedrine this pseudo ephedrine is the sympathomimetics so when you are putting s this become term so sympathomimetic are the drug the agent the chemical which mimic mimic means enhancing enhancing the activity of sympathetic nervous system so sympathetic nervous system neurotransmitter is norepinephrine so it is a producing activity similar to the norepinephrine so this ephedra ephedrine or pseudo ephedrine is used for the therapy of asthma because this is act as a bronchodilator and also this is going to relieve the congestion so that is why this is called decongestant when you are going to put s this become decongestant a term means the drug that uh, chemical the agent which is going to relieve the congestion nasal congestion or you can say this is called uh, uh, anti uh, anti uh, decongestant agent now the last is the uh, from the sap sap is the secre uh, the secretion of the plant and the name of the plant is catharanthus rogeus from that we are isolating the the uh, the constituent like vin cristine and vin vlastine and they are anti neoplastic agent or anti cancerous uh, agent how they are anti cancerous and anti uh, uh, neoplastic the mechanism of action how these drug are acting these drug are going to inhibit the formation of microtubule so when there is reduction uh, reduction of microtubule formation this is going to inhibit the spindle form formation in mitotic division of the cell so cell is not going to get replicate so this is about the uh, the the constituent of the plant origin now we have to go through the animal and microorganism sources so the, regarding the animal natural sources are concerned one more term is there pharmacogeuticals so pharmacon means drug ju means animal so the these drug the agent the chemical isolated from the animal are may call the drug is may call pharmacogeuticals pharmacogeuticals and these drugs agent are like antisera vaccine hormone enzymes vitamins coagulant anticoagulant blood and blood components so these all are isolating or getting from the animal origin so we have to go through the one by one take the example of hormone we are isolating from the animal source are insulin thyroxine and gonadotropin we take the example of vitamin we are isolating this vitamin a and d and other fatty acid from the cod fish its liver part of the cod fish so that is why this this is called cod liver oil so this is vitamin then you go through the vaccine vaccine is also from we are getting from the uh, the vaccine of the animal origin are like the anti rabies vaccine and then polio vaccine the anthrax spore vaccine so these all are the vaccine so how it differ from anti sera so anti sera and ant vaccine the, what is the difference between these two, two term the terminology the difference between these two term are that vaccine are the agent that are going to induce to synthesize the antibody whereas anti sera is itself an antibody itself an prepared antibody so this is the, uh, the, the 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 difference so anti sera is usually used when you are getting the symptoms of that particular disease against which that antibody or anti gate anti sera you are having
like tetanus, etni, anti tetanus serum means ki this when you have to use when there is symptom of tetan tetanus is coming. Likewise, anti diphtheria serum, anti uh, canine distemper serum, hemorrhagic septicemia serum. Now, other animal sources deeper drugs are liver extract. Liver extract, this is very much usable. In animal injectable preparation of B complex is coming along with the liver extract. Liver extract with the B complex that is coming. The enzyme source of animal origins are trypsin, chymotrypsin, and pepsin. These all the three are the enzyme participation participating in the digestion. Whereas this fibrinogen is the enzyme what participating in the circulatory system. It is so fibrinolysis means. Lysis of fibrin. The enzyme which lyses the lysin is fibrin. Lyses the uh, fibrin is called fibro fibrinolysin. Again, we have to go through the agent, drug, component, chemical that are isolated from the animal origin are. It may be the coagulant and anticoagulant. The example under these are uh, under the anticoagulant are these three are. So, heparin, herodin, and aprotinin, these all are anticoagulant. However, the protamine is a coagulant. Why? Because this protamine is reversing the action of uh, coagulant heparin. So, this is the... Uh, the uh, this, is, uh, this is the... Heparin is a... Coagulant. Now we have to go through the blood component and blood. Uh, blood. So as you know, when there is the anemia, blood deficient, blood loss, at that time we are in very much need of blood and blood component. And nowadays you have go through the corona treatment. This is also going uh, going through the platelet. We are getting plasma therapy or platelet therapy. So from that from, we are getting from the animal sources are whole blood, plasma or platelets. And under this, the last one is the animal extract and organ are liver extract and bile extract. So this is all about the animal sources. Now we have to go through the, under the, the under the organic natural sources are from the micro. Last one is the microorganism. So under the microorganism is indicating that these drugs, the chemical, the agent, the substance, we are isolating from the microorganism. And the best example is the antibiotic. So antibiotics, if you go through the definition of antibiotics, antibiotics are, as we are already discussed, antibiotics are the agent or the chemical that are isolated from the, uh, the microorganism and which is also acting against the microorganism but not against uh, itself, I mean from which it has been isolated. And the microorganism which give rise the drugs are bacteria like Bacillus anthracis is going to give the antibiotic Bacitracin, like fungus, fungus like Penicillium notatum. From Penicillium notatum, we are getting the antibiotic Penicillin G, like Actinomycetes. That is the Streptomyces gracious. So, Streptomyces gracious is going to give the aminoglycoside antibiotic. We are calling it Streptomycin. Now, also from the microorganism, we are getting the vaccine like canine distemper vaccine, anti rabies vaccine. The drug that we are isolated from the microorganism, which are anti neoplastic or anti cancerous in nature, are so these all are the antibiotic isolated from the microorganism and huge as anti-cancerous anti-neoplastic agent are actinomycin D, bleomycin, doxorubicin, mitomycin D. Some of the drug we are also isolating from microorganisms that are anti-diabetic drugs. So anti-diabetic drugs are the drugs that are going to use to treat the diabetes. 
आर कॉल एंटी डायबेटिक एजेंट और एंटी डायबेटिक्स एंड दीज आर ए कार्बोज एंड भोगाली बोज सो दिस ए कार्बोज एंड भोगली बोज आर गोइंग टू इनहिबिट इंजाइम ग्लाइकोसाइड हाइड्रोलोज बिकॉज ऑफ इनिबिशन ऑफ दिस इंजाइम ग्लाइकोसाइड हाइड्रोलेज द कन्वर्सन ऑफ कार्बोहाइड्रेट टू ग्लूकोज विल नॉट अकर एंड देयर फोर दिस इज देयर फोर इट विल इनिबिट द रेज इनिबिट द इनिबिट टू रेज द ग्लूकोज एंड देयर फोर इट इज यूज एज ए एंटी डायबेटिक ड्रग now is the probiotic so this is also derived from two word pro uh, bios means life so this is the agent used for the life and they are live bacteria and yeast and this you can say these are the microflora so as you know this microflora is going to participating in the vitamin b complex formation in the uh, the rumen or you can say this is also going to help in the digestion in human being and these <coughs> are used for helping the digestion like dahi so the example is lactobacillus species and the now the last one is the vitamins so as you know the microflora present in the rumen or the yeast are synthesizing a participation participating in the synthesizing of vitamin b complex so these are all are the example of the microorganism so now we have to go through the last one under the natural source is of inorganic organism uh, uh, inorganic source and that are mineral and you can say the metal and non metal so under mineral origin are the the most important are the iron this as you know this is the component of hemoglobin so you are also knowing about the calcium this is the constituent of the bone you are also knowing about the sodium ion and potassium ion these two are participate participate uh, participating in conveying the message through the nerve sodium ion and potassium ion you are also knowing about the sulfur this is also one of the very important uh, constituent of the uh, the high sulfur containing uh, part like hair nails then you have to also the magnesium is also very very important yeah as you are know this zinc is also very very important for the enzymatic uh, function so these all are the component of mineral origin coming under the natural inorganic source other under the metals are magnesium sulfate this is also called mag sulf so when you are going to give this mag sulf through the oral route oral is very very important when you are going to give this mag sulf magnesium sulfate through oral route this is going to improve the digestion so that is why this is called the purgative and when you are going to give this same mag sulf through iv route this is going to produce the collapse of uh, co collapsing the heart and therefore this is used as a euthanizing the dog now we have to go through the uh, calcium carbonate and zinc sulfate uh, calcium carbonate and zinc sulfate are the astringent in nature so when you are going to put the, the s this become astringent and the definition is astringent are the agent or the drug or the chemical which is going to precipitate the protein so astringent are the drug the agent the chemical which precipitated the protein is called astringent and here is the iron so iron sulfate ferrous sulfate is going to enhance the rbc or blood cells and that is why this is called the hematinic under this is the next is the copper sulfate this copper sulfate is the very much used earlier used as a hematics so hematics are the agent which is going to induce the vomition to the animal is called or a human being is called hematics now 
we have to go through the last one is the non metal like iodine like bromine like hydrogen peroxide like carbon carbon and like sulfur so we have to discuss one by one this iodine is in the form of potassium iodide when you are going to inhale it iodine as a potassium iodide solution then this is going to be used as a spectorant so what is the spectorant a spectorant we are going to put here the s so a spectorant are the agent are the chemical which is going to use to influence or effect or increase the evacuation of mucus or content present in the respiratory passage is called expectorants so this is that is why this is used in a cough then potassium bromide is a sedatives when you are putting s this becomes sedatives so again the sedatives is in the form of potassium bromide that is bromine in potassium bromide form used as a sedatives so sedatives are the agent that is going to keep the animal or human being calm and quiet and like anesthetic then antiseptic agent like hydrogen peroxide h2o2 this is used as antiseptic we already defined earlier then sulfur this is also as a insecticide to kill the insecticide this is also going to disinfect the area so what is disinfectant this means remove remove infection means in infection so agent the drug the chemical which remove the infection is called disinfectants s you have to put always s so charcoal is the ra last one as you people are much aware about the charcoal is the agent or the chemical that is kala lakdi ka koila is used as adsorbent adsorbents are those agent when you are going to put s this become adsorbent adsorbents are the those agent that are going to adsorb the item present in the surrounding and therefore this charcoal is the one of the choicest choicest drug as a antidote as a small very antidote uh, antidote for the therapy uh, for the th therapy of toxicity so this is all about this class